Welcome to the Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner, where each month we bring you a new fly pattern to give a try to on our Central Oregon lakes and rivers. In addition to showing you how to tie each pattern, I'll feature fishing technique tips and tricks, and I'll cover some of the entomology behind each pattern to help gain a better understanding of the bugs that we're trying to imitate. I have field tested each of the patterns that I feature each month to make sure that they catch fish. I'll cover tying instructions for the fly as well as materials to help you be able to recreate these patterns on your own vise. For this month's pattern, I'm going to tie a blood midge. Now most of us are fishing coronamids in a lot of our area lakes early season, but those coronamids ultimately hatch and become uh, a midge that rides on the surface of the water. Often if you've got a hatch going on, you'll have trout feeding on them. So I like to use this pattern um, during a blood midge hatch. Uh, it's an old, old pattern that I picked up years ago at uh, California's Davis Lake, which was very well known for its blood midge hatch. But here in Central Oregon, we have a lot of blood midges on Crane Prairie and other, other places. And so this is an excellent pattern to dry fly fish the midge hatch. So let's review the materials for this pattern. I'll cover them one by one to give you an idea of why I chose each. For a hook, I'm going to use a Firehole 419 in size 14. This is a competition barbless hook used for dry flies. For thread, I'm using a 6 aught Danville's flat waxed in an olive brown. For the abdomen on this fly, I'm going to use dyed orange strung marabou. For the rib, I'm going to use copper wire. This is more for strength of the fly than it is for ribbing, as the marabou is fairly delicate and will get torn up in trout teeth. For the wing, I'm using deer hair. For the thorax, I'm going to use a peacock barb off the tail feather. And finally, for the hackle, I'm using a Prograde Whiting Dry Fly Saddle. And this is a unique variant with uh, colors that range from tan to uh, kind of a brown dun. One I really, really like a lot for this pattern. So let's get started tying this pattern. I'm going to tie on my thread right at the two-thirds point of the hook and wind it back to the tail set position. I'm going to tie in my marabou right at the tail set position with about two or three wraps of thread. The tag end I'm leaving off the end of the hook is essentially the shuck of the fly as it's hatching. Then I'll tie in my copper wire to rib the marabou. So from here, I'm going to wind the abdomen using the marabou fibers. And I'll wind those forward and tie that off. Um, I kind of weave it forward to make sure that they don't get matted down as I tie them. Once I've clipped off the excess, I'll go ahead and follow that up by weaving the rib through the marabou to add that strength to the abdomen of this pattern.
So I've selected out a small clump of deer hair and I'm going to clean all the under fur very, uh, very well. And then I'm going to go ahead and stack that in my stacker. So now I'm going to advance my thread to the eye of the hook and I'm going to tie the wing on um, with the tips facing forward. And then I'll tie over the butts back to the, um, the abdomen and I'll clip off the butts of the deer hair uh, leaving them overhanging the beginning of the uh, of the abdomen. So next I'm going to tie in my peacock curl um, to wind over the uh, thorax area. And I'm also going to tie in my whiting uh, dry fly saddle at the same time. So now let me wind the peacock curl forward. I've got the shiny side facing backward and the dull side facing forward so that I can get the maximum density out of this peacock curl. And I'll tie that off and clip off the excess. So now I'll follow that up and wind my um, whiting dry fly saddle through that thorax area with about four wraps or so. And then I can tie that off and clip off the excess. So now I'll whip finish it a couple of times in front of the wing uh, at the head position and clip off my thread. So now let me rotate the fly in the vise so you can see all sides of this blood midge. When you're fishing it, it's important to uh, go ahead and goop up the hackle and the wing, but leave the marabou untouched. You want that marabou to sink into the surface film and actually penetrate the water column so that trout can easily see it. So that has been your Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner for this month. I hope you'll give the blood midge a try. It's a good pattern in the right situation and it's important to have a few of these in your box as we get into the heart of midge season on our area lakes. If you like what you see, please subscribe to this page and visit us at Sun River Anglers on Facebook. Thanks for watching.